All right, welcome back. We're gonna start with this example where we have what is the present value of $2,000 due at the end of eight years if our interest rate, or more specifically, our nominal annual interest rate, where the number of periods is two, is equal to 0.05. So how do we deal with this nominal annual interest rate? Well, first we know from this that our number of periods, m, is equal to two. And so that means that this nominal annual rate is convertible two times per year or is convertible semi-annually. All right, and so now how do we use that to solve this problem? How do we find the present value of $2,000 with this given interest rate. Well, there's actually two different ways we could go about this. We could either A, find the effective semi-annual rate and use that to calculate our present value, or we could B, find the annual effective rate and use that to calculate our present value. So I'm actually gonna do both ways and show you how you can use the nominal rate we're given here to find two different rates to solve this problem in two different ways. So let's start with the first method where we find the effective semi-annual rate. And so we know that if we take our nominal annual interest rate here, which is compounded semi-annually, and divide it by the number of periods, we will get that effective semi-annual rate. And so in this case, our effective semi-annual rate, J, is going to be equal to that nominal rate divided by the number of periods, which is two. And so that's going to be equal to 0 0.05 divided by two, which is equal to 0 0.025. And this is our effective semi-annual rate, which we can then use to find the present value of $2,000 at the end of eight years. And so our present value is going to be equal to that $2,000 times our present value factor with the interest rate J for a total of eight years. Now, our interest rate here, J, is a semi-annual rate, so it's going to occur twice as often than it would if it was an annual rate. So you have to remember that this time value here has to be measured in the same units of time as our interest rate. So our interest rate is semi-annual, so this time value should also be measured in the amount of semi-annual periods. So in this case, we're gonna actually multiply this eight by two, right? Because a semi-annual rate is going to occur twice per year. So if we have eight years and we multiply it by two, then we'll have the total amount of times that this is compounded within that period. And so now let's solve. This is going to be equal to 2,000, times one over one plus j, which in this case is 0 0.025 to the 16th power, right? That 16 comes from eight times two, and this is our present value factor, right? Our v is equal to one divided by one plus our interest rate to the amount of time t. And so then if we were to plug this into our calculator, we would find that this is then equal to $1,347.25. That would be the present value of our $2,000 over the course of eight years. So now let's look at our second method. What is the second way that we could go about solving this problem or finding the present value of this $2,000? Well, the first way was we found the effective non-yearly rate, or in this case, a semi-annual rate. And so the second way would be to find the annual effective interest rate. And so in order to find the annual effective interest rate, we have to use that conversion formula to take us from that nominal rate into the annual effective interest rate. And so that looks like this. We have I is equal to one plus the nominal annual rate divided by the number of periods, two, to the power of the number of periods, which is also two, minus one. And so we already calculated this part right here, right? This is the same as calculating J, right? We have our nominal rate divided by the number of periods that that rate is convertible for. And so this would be equal to one plus 0 0.025, squared minus one. And then if we were to plug that into the calculator, we would find that our annual effective interest rate is equal to 0 0.050625. And so now we have our annual effective interest rate. So all we did was convert our given nominal rate, which is what this notation means, into an effective annual rate using that conversion formula. So now we can find the present value. The present value is going to be equal, once again, to that $2,000 times the present value factor, but in this case, it's going to be with the annual effective rate, and then our time period is eight. And we don't have to change that this time because we have an annual effective rate. It's taking place every year, and this eight is already measured in years, right? We took that from the eight years in our problem up here. So we don't have to change anything there. So we can just rewrite this as 2000 times one over one plus 0 0.0 five zero six two five to the eighth power. And then if we were to plug that into the calculator, we would get the exact same result that we got before. We would find that this is equal 
to $1,347.25. And so no matter which way you want to do this problem, whether you want to find the effective rate that is semi-annual, or you want to find the annual effective rate, you're still going to find the same exact present value answer. As long as you remember to adjust your time. That is the big thing here. If we didn't multiply by two here, this would be a completely different answer. So this was a good example to show you how we take our nominal interest rate and convert it into two different types of interest rates that allow us to solve this problem in two different ways. Okay, so for our second and final example, we have using a nominal interest rate of I convertible semi-annually, an investment of $1,200 today and $2,300 at the end of year one will accumulate to $3,700 at the end of year two. Calculate I, which would be our nominal interest rate in this case. And you'll see I already have a timeline drawn here. We're going to need this timeline because we have more than one transaction to work with here. Specifically, we have this original investment of $1,200 and another second investment of $2,300 at the end of year one. Additionally, we're also told what the future value is in this case. We are told that at the end of two years, we're gonna have this $3,700 amount. And so we can go ahead and just label our timeline to start off this problem. So we're gonna have time equals zero, which would be today. We'll have time equals one, which would be one year in the future, and then time equals two or two years in the future. And we are told that today we have that investment of $1,200. So I'll write that in. We start with 1,200 and we know that we end or we're going to accumulate to $3,700 at the end of the year two. So that's going to be our future value. And then we're told that we also make an investment at the end of year one of $2,300. All right, so then before we start to solve this problem, we also wanna make sure to figure out what our interest rate is for this scenario. So we are told that we have a nominal interest rate of I convertible semi-annually. So that means that this interest rate is an annual rate that is convertible semi-annually. So we would probably want to get an effective semi-annual rate rather than an annual effective rate. It's gonna be much easier to work with this rate as an effective semi-annual rate since we're already told that it is convertible semi-annually. And so our interest rate in this case is going to be I and then our period is two, right? Our M or number of periods per year is going to be two because a semi-annual rate occurs twice per year. And then to get the effective semi-annual rate, we divide this nominal rate by two. So that's going to be our interest rate in this case. I, our nominal rate, divided by two. So now let's set up our equation and solve for i. So we are told that the future value in this case is $3,700. So we will have 3,700 is equal, right? That's gonna be our future value is equal to the accumulation of our investments. And in this case, we have two investments. We have an initial investment of $1,200. So we'll start with that one we have 1,200, and that's going to be accumulating for two years, right? We invested that today, but we're gonna have this future value at the end of two years, so we need to take into account that two-year period. So we're gonna have that this amount is multiplied by one plus our interest rate, and just to make things simpler, I'm not gonna write this two in the parentheses. Hopefully you know that that's what I'm referring to when I write this I divided by two. But just to make it less complex to write down, I'm just going to leave that little bit out. And then this quantity, we're gonna be taking to the power of the number of periods. So you may be tempted to write two as our exponent here for two years, but you have to remember that our interest rate is measured semi-annually. This is an effective semi-annual rate. So that means that our number of periods also needs to be measured in semi-annual periods. So in this case, two years is going to be four semi-annual periods because there are two semi-annual periods in one year, right? A semi-annual rate occurs twice every year, so it's going to occur four times in two years. And then we have to add our second investment of $2,300. So we'll have plus 2,300. And that also is gonna be multiplied by one plus I divided by two. And this one is only accumulating for one year from time equals one to time equals two. So this one is just going to be compounded for two semi-annual periods. So we'll have two. So now our equation is set up, we're ready to solve for i, but hopefully you kind of noticed by now, it's going to be a little tricky to solve for that value of i. This is not the nicest equation we could have asked for in terms of solving easily. But what I do notice is that this looks very similar to a quadratic equation. And so let me show you what I mean by that. If we were to subtract this 3700 from both sides of the equation, we would have zero equals 1200 
times that one plus i divided by two to the fourth, and then we'd also have that 2300 times one plus i divided by two to the second, and then we'd have minus 3700. This now would be a quadratic equation that we could factor in order to solve for our variable, but it's gonna be a little bit more complex than that. And so watch what happens if we let x equal one plus i divided by two, squared, right? That would be this quantity right here that 2300 is being multiplied by. What if we let this equal x? And that would mean that x squared would be equal to one plus i divided by two to the fourth, right? If we squared this x and we squared this quantity, we'd have x squared is equal to this same quantity that was up here to the fourth power. So now if we substitute x and x squared for these values in this equation, what do we have now? Well, we're gonna have zero equals 1200 x squared plus 2300 x minus 3700. Now we can actually simplify this even further. We can divide each one of these terms by 100 and that will make things a lot easier to work with as well. So we will have that zero equals 12 x squared plus 23 x minus 37. And now this is a quadratic equation that we are probably pretty used to seeing and we now know how to solve for that x value. Now, normally we would wanna go through and factor this to solve for x, but I'm gonna save you the time and tell you that this is actually not factorable. We're going to need to use the quadratic formula to solve for the values of x. So that means we're gonna to have to bring out our old friend here, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So in this case for our equation, a is going to be equal to 12, b is going to be equal to 23, and c is going to be equal to negative 37. So if you were to plug these values into this formula, we would find that x is going to be equal to 1.0421, and there's some other decimals there, as well as x equal to negative 2.9587, and more decimals there as well. Now, we're actually not going to be interested in this negative value here because we're not gonna be able to solve for our interest rate if we used that. If you were to plug that x value into what we set x equal to, we'd have to take the square root of both sides. And of course, we can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real value back. So we're not interested in this negative value of x. So I'm going to just erase that. So then this value of x is what we're looking for. We now solve for the x in this equation, which we can now use and set equal to our quantity from before and solve for i. So I'm gonna clean up my work a little bit here and then we can do that. Okay, so we found that the x in this equation was equal to 1.0421 and there are some other decimals there. And now we can set this equal to this quantity here. So we will have 1.0421 is equal to one plus i divided by two squared. And now if we take the square root of both sides so we can cancel out this squared quantity, we will then have 1.0208 and some other decimals. And this is going to be equal to one plus i divided by two. And then if we were to subtract one and then multiply by two, we would just be left with what i is equal to. And we will find that i is then going to be equal to 0.0. 417 or 4.17%. And that is the value of i or our interest rate that we have been looking for since we started this problem. We were told that we had a nominal interest rate of i and then we had all these investments that we made and we wanted to know that value of i or that nominal rate and now we know what it is. This is our nominal annual rate convertible semi-annually. So this was an example where sometimes when you try to solve for an interest rate, it can be a little tricky when you have more than just one transaction. So hopefully you found this example to be helpful in showing you how to find an interest rate in a scenario like this. All right, so that's all I had for this example's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get around to answering those. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.